Welcome to another episode of uh, podcast, Backholders Pod. Today, we have Suing with us, uh, as usual, Bunti and also Kelvin. So, Chiking is not here today. <laughs> no one will open for us. So, I <laughs> hope I did a good job. Yeah, so tell us a little bit about who you are, Suing, so that the audience will know. Yeah. Okay, sure. Hi, everyone who is watching this. Good morning, good afternoon, or good night. My name is Suyin. I run a YouTube channel uh, under my name, Suyin Ong. And it's about money, it's about life, it's about relationships. Previously, it was just about money and investing. That was my focus. But I kept like coming back to like my learnings, my journey, my struggles. And you know, so that's the direction of my channel. It's about building great lives um, for everyone. And... I don't do this full-time. I, I work full-time in sales. And I used to be a teacher like Eric, uh, teaching A-levels. And it's the best. Teaching is the best job. Yeah. Okay, so I've been so recently seeing you going surfing here and there. What's up with that? Surfing. Oh, okay. Um, so as I say on my videos, I went through a breakup. <clears throat> and it's a massive breakup because like nine years together. And it really like shook me to the core like I was really really depressed my self-worth went to like the floor like zero and you know like getting out of like the depression and like discovering myself again like I really wanted to do something new and then I saw this Instagram post by my friend who has been surfing and I was like "Ooh, it's a surf camp it's like one week let's do it la. like it's gonna be epic and then when I did it I was like oh shit I understand now because like surfing reminds me of life. It's really hard, like catching the waves, like paddling out and yeah. like <clears throat> willing to go and take the wave and have the high chance of wiping out and like rolling under the wave and we call it washing machine, right? Like drink water and like those surfboard hit you, all these things. And then when you're paddling back out, there's a very high chance that I don't pedal fast enough and then another wave comes or I or like another surfer hits me. So it's, it's really like a parallel to life where I feel I learn a lot by being a surfer and by being out in the water and in nature. So it's very special. You should go and do it one day. Actually, what was the most challenging part of the uh, relationship uh, you mind to share? Because I think nine oh. years is quite a long <clears throat> period of time, right? So what was the most challenging part? Um, challenging part for me in uh, this relationship was that our values were very different. So although we had a lot of fun together, like he brought out the fun side in me because I'm quite serious. Like you cannot, like last time I used to be so serious um like i would say my favorite pastime is like watching ted talks oh my god it's so boring like like so so cringy like to say that now but yeah the challenge that i had with him was our values were different where i really feel that in my life i want to give a lot i want to work very very hard and the things that i'm working for yes it's money um i I committed to earning a very high salary and like investing most of my money and building portfolios that make me more. But it's really about the meaning behind all of this. Like, why am I doing this? Yeah, so like, I feel like I, I live a very big life and I want to and I'm working towards it. And <clears throat> for him, I feel like um, he was very content, very satisfied with the life he has. But there was also a lot of unhappiness and comparison. But what frustrated me was that he didn't want to do something about it. He was sad and it was painful. But, you know, like he couldn't get past that. And no matter how hard I, I push, I support it. And I, I don't know, like some something wrong with like the female brain sometimes in me. Like I want to fix, right? But it can, I cannot fix him. It's it's not a relationship. It's not my job to fix him. Yeah. So, yeah. Mm. Usually, it's the, the other way around. Right? I noticed that um, yeah. when we talk about money, for, for example, uh, just attended the talk yesterday uh, where Kelvin 
was being uh, it was interviewed lah. Then I I look at the audience, it's like okay, maybe in ninety percent is all male. So usually guys is the oh. one that you know like focus on the money and so on. Uh, career money, <laughs> ladies is maybe not so much on all this money stuff uh, But you are like totally opposite uh. Do you do you do you agree with my observations? It's like you you yes. are the driven yeah. one, driven one. Got reason one ma right like what's the story behind this? And the story is that my whole family were all girls, like four of us. And I'm the third in the family. And I've I've grown up with like a very blessed background. Uh so yeah. so my 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 drive in life is that I need to be able to sub- support myself because I grew up with so much privilege. Then the bar is this high already, ma. So I'm like, okay, how how am I gonna afford my lifestyle? That was the first thought, right? And then with my relationship, of course, yeah, I wanted my ex boyfriend to like take care of me, to be the provider. Like it feels good. Like it feels like it feels natural, and I love that. But when I didn't, when I didn't feel that happening and didn't see it, then I thought, okay, um, then what do I choose now? Am I gonna choose to like? just suffer no I can do something about it so that's when I started to like earn more money figure out investing and um, it's out of a need right it's all like a very strong desire and you know that's what I did and not everybody goes through this journey Uh, although it's very cool like I, I love who I am right now I know the gender the gender roles are kind of reversed and it intimidating i hear uh to be like my my partner um yeah but i wouldn't have it any other way la. and i want to grow i want to grow together with with them with the men in my life and and the women in my life and just like finding what is the right balance for both yeah we yeah. don't have enough females in our community we don't yeah we, we need a lot more mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, actually, I have a question, right? Just now you were saying that you, you after you end the relationship of nine years, so you're saying that, oh, you, you feel devastated. Yeah, ob- obviously, you feel devastated. You say that your self-worth uh, plummeted and, and, and things like that. So I was just like a, a bit uh, curious because usually the person who initiated the breakup usually don't feel that way. It's the person who gets broken up with, like... <laughs> If I'm your boyfriend, if let's say I was the ex-boyfriend, then you break out with me, then you feel so devastated, I'll be like, what? <laughs> you were, you're planning this all along. like. <laughs> oh, you know, it wasn't a plan. Okay, let me shut the window. It's a bit distracting. Um, It was not. It was not the plan. The breakup was... um. I didn't want it until... um. So an incident happened. This one, I don't know, like, it's a bit too much information for the public, I feel, but <clears throat> how to say this? Um, I, there was, there was one night where we were talking, um, and it just came out, uh, I just, I just said, I cannot be in a marriage where I don't feel desired by my husband. Mm. That is the exact phrase uh, that caused the breakup so I wanted the breakup because I felt that way and then he also wanted the breakup because he felt lost in his finances in his career direction Um, and like later on I found out that actually he was having doubts about us like months and months earlier so in fact he wanted the breakup way before I did so I was broken up with her mm. okay but you've you've spoke the words la. Mm. You, felt mm-hmm. the, you felt the rejection emotionally mm. and then after that you just verbalize it saying yeah. that you acted this way you know let's let's end it yeah like yeah okay okay yeah. for Punti so, and Eric you guys married your first love right did you no experience, no experience. Yeah, so Bundy, like, straight away, one shot, one kill, that kind of thing. Same oh. for Eric. For me, I went through a breakup. Uh, so I sort of understand what Swin felt. So I, basically, I was the, more like a jerk. 
more like the the the, the bad guy in that in that scenario lah. Uh, so so what happened was I was also quite immature during that time. Uh, I think I met my first girlfriend during sec high school from six ah basically. It was about 17, 18 years old. So back then, like marriage wasn't even in the topic at all. So at at the time, I just thought of like having fun, like that kind of thing, lah. So I think in the end, so it was also quite long. I think five years or more. Wow, I also forgot when I got broken up. But basically, I think both sides also got hurt. Uh, it's it's like you know like those anime kind of thing where you had to go through a major trauma. Like for Naruto, the parents had to die first. Uh, that kind of thing. So, so I think everyone has to more or less go through that if it, if they are not at that certain level of maturity. Uh, so same for me. So then right after that, I already I knew what I have to change lah. So in in Suin's case, I I think for the boyfriend or even for Suin is that breakup. Even though it's hard to say, is it might be a necessary thing. To know that what mistake you make, so that the next one will be a better relationship. Yeah. Yes, so I, I sound like a pro, but actually I'm not as pro. <laughs> no, I agree. I agree, Calvin. Like in life, right? When do we really grow? We grow when we make mistakes. When we go through really difficult things, like trauma, traumatic things, and that's when, like, oh, they say there's always a breakdown before a breakthrough, and this is it, lah. And I feel like. In my case, the breakup, yeah, painful, but I needed it. You're right, and I found myself after it. Yeah, but I think we still need to look forward, right? But just 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 a curious question. So now with this experience that you had, right, when you look for your next partner, will what what kind of criteria that you were set? Like, like <laughs> would would change a lot? Uh, with this experience, for, say for example. Um, it has to be, you know, like okay, with certain amount of net worth <clears> and so on. But would 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 this be in the criteria? Yeah, I I mean, like I have a crazy brain and I have high expectations for myself, so my partner better bring it, lah, right? So, um, when I first like okay, twenty twenty three now it's June, and when I started being ready to date again in March. I went on a first date with um my friend's friend, so I'm not on the apps. That scares me. Um, so I get introduced slow, or I meet people organically, and then I started to think like, what do I want in a man? Um, because now I know what I want in me. I want my partner to be a bonus. He's not going to give me happy. I uh, like. He's not going to be in charge of my happiness. That's my role. Um. Yeah. Lah. So I had this crazy criteria. Lah. Like, okay, this guy must be of like a similar socio economic status, and like he needs to be very driven. He'll do whatever it takes to like um give his all in the relationship. Like I had these like like really like fixed criteria, and obviously no one's gonna meet it. Like, there's no perfect man, right? Now, like um. All I, all I want and all I need is for the guy to, yeah, be willing to be responsible, which means to do whatever it takes and never give up on me, on him, on us, and that's what matters. Huh? Mm. Yeah, I, I think that's that's pretty okay, right? Like, basically, you're just looking for someone who have the growth mindset. Mm, but of, of course, on top of that, like I need to be attracted to him. Um, yeah, lah. Then all those like nitty gritty, and I feel like I recently found someone. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, stay okay. tuned. <laughs> Subscribe to Suing's channel to find out more. <laughs> yeah, that one. Yeah, that one. Very new. Very very so, new. Mm. Not not ready yet to to show to the. Oh, not yet. Like I mean, like just started dating. I had this crazy, funny project with my friends. They were like, "Huh, okay, Suin. Um, you say you want to date. Are you gonna have like a criteria for like scoring your date?" So we had we had fun with it, lah. It was like them stupid. Um, so we called this project ten out of ten for Suin, where the goal is to date ten different men by end of twenty twenty three. 
because I've been in such a long relationship, I don't know what's out there. That was like the premise, right? So now with this project, I've dated um, three, three guys. And I noticed, like, I noticed how I behaved and I noticed how um, it's really funny. Like, so the first guy I went on a date with, he's, he's amazing. He's like an incredible friend. And I realized that on the first day, I was like, you like, oh, does he like me? And all this, like, like straight away, like that's where my brain went to. And then I caught myself and I started thinking, hang on, do I even like him? Why do I want him to like me? What's the point in that? So it's about like really being honest with myself. Yeah. And then I met the second guy I went on a date with, also really great. And then the third one came very, very unexpectedly. And it like he just makes me feel like not dating anybody else. Mm, but you still got seven more to go though. I, I don't really want to do that <laughs> anymore. So, <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Like I'm conflicted. Like, what do you what do you guys think? Like, should you, I? You can change the project name. Three out of three for suing. Oh, okay. <laughs> that time's the charm, right? <laughs> Kelvin, eh? you're, you're the jerk here, so maybe let us know what you think. Well, for me, I went through this dating app. I was like playing the numbers game. La. I think I told them this before. So basically, I was going through one date per week. Uh, after like Bobby. three months, I don't know. And, and every day, I was the guy who is paying. So it's super, super chore, super heavy on my bank account. <laughs> that aside, uh, after a while, I more or less knew what I needed. La. What I, what I was looking for. La. So three, I, I think you will know la, your criteria is so high. You will know what you need. Uh, then once you meet it, then, then just go with it. I go, the extra run, I just, I feel like wasting your time. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm curious on the criteria. Uh, say for example, is financial literacy one of the criteria? Given that you know you are influencers, right? So you probably know more about finance, investing more than more than like general public. So like, like there are two two things, right? Which which is related but different. One is like okay, you, you want to know that like, as is, is this guy um like have good earning powers, um high income or not. That that's one, right? Some people they have high income, but when it comes to investing, when it comes to managing their money, they are like, you know, like no, no idea at all, right? So are these, you know, there's, there's a clear criteria. And, and do you how do you test them whether they are good with their financial literacy? <laughs> Yeah, so I actually have this pop quiz that I passed to them on the first date. No, I don't do that. That's crazy. <laughs> but you're right, Bunti. Like, there is, like, okay, I say, like, yeah, you'll do whatever it takes. But obviously, when, like, really getting down into the relationship and the dating, then I would I would notice, more, like, where, where he's at with, like, his finances. And I'm not expecting him to have, like, more money than me i'm not expecting him to like be like like a master at this like because even we know like we're we're like influencers like we're in the public space we're not we're not the masters at this we are all on this journey and we what make mistakes mean? Bunti is the master Bunti, okay Bunti, tell me all about your mastery man like how to make one million into one billion yeah watching youtube watching youtube oh my god but watching okay Kelvin. <laughs> yeah, Kelvin. But Kelvin is still learning investing. He never changed his uh, channel name to Kelvin Learn Investing. Really? Like, Kelvin Mastered Investing. But yeah, like okay, how I how I see it, right, is like we talk about we talk about like like what do you do with your money? Um, then you can see la, straight away in how they spend it. Like, do they live large? Do they do they pay for bills? Um what are their interests in life and how much they're willing to spend. Like, these kind of things cannot really see on the first date. It's going to be a relationship, like a friendship, a connection that, like, comes over time. And what I can see for this guy um, is that we've, we've had conversations about, like, what we do with our money. And I have not seen everything, right? Like, um, I've not seen, like, okay, like, I roughly know what, what he puts his money in, like property, some crypto business. But I I don't know until I, I actually experience it or see proof or whatever, right? Um, but 
really it's it's not about that it's about what if one day both of us lost all our money what are we gonna do to build it back up again and it's that skill set that matters more than the zeros in our portfolio or whatever we have right now yeah it's more about like thoughtful about how the, uh, the person manage the financials, right? Some some people, it's like, oh, you ask them, uh, how, how do you save? Where do you put your money? They're like, oh, I just, you know, just let them sit in bank account. No no planning at all. So if, if that if that's the case, what how will you approach it? Will you say, okay, let, let, me, let me educate you. You should do this ABC or you will just say, uh, see ya, I still have four more, uh, seven more candidates to go. <laughs> <laughs> um. Well, so that's the contrast, right? My ex boyfriend was um not re not not great love with his finances, and I, I wanted to support him to like help him fix it all of that. So we did we did make progress, but it's very different when it comes from me wanting it versus him wanting it. Yeah. So would I educate uh my new partner on? Uh, I feel like that's weird, but I, I will always. watch your videos, la. Yeah, I mean, like if he's my partner, creasing. if he's <laughs> if he's my partner, I hope he's watching my videos, and that just shows me like, like okay, maybe he's he cares about like what's going on in my life, how I see the world is really through my videos, right? My lens, right? So my ex boyfriend actually didn't watch my videos, and I was it's so modified. upset. That's really normal. Uh, like, even even my wife and my kid don't watch my video. Oh, uh, I mean, even I, I don't so watch upset. my video. Oh my god! <laughs> you you okay? So like, are you surprised that your wife doesn't watch your videos if you don't watch your own videos? No, I mean, I, of course I, I won't watch because I already have no reason to watch lah. Like. Do you uh, like, do you still? It's, edit? it's like admiring myself in the mirror like, I I won't do that lah. Like. Oh. <laughs> but I mean, I for, do that. <laughs> okay. Do you edit your videos still or do you outsource now? Uh half half la basically. Half half. Okay. So I no, so this whole family and relatives thing, right? Is hard. I, I would say it's is a big expectation to think that your partner will su- support you on this journey. I mean there was of course of course support, but they are not they won't it's hard to uh, ask them to even be there for you. But how do I put it? It's like, okay, they will watch your video. Uh, they won't watch your video, but they will still be there for you. They, I think they subscribe, they subscribe to your channel. They subscribe. Like, I think that still matters. Like. <laughs> my wife and son subscribe to my channel, but they don't watch it. Yeah, they don't watch it, right? Mm. Because they already see you the entire day. Then the, the extra video is like, what's the purpose of that? Could be. I mean, there's only one way to find out, right? By asking, like, I can ask my new... Uh, the, the new guy I'm seeing like do you watch my videos and why and why not like we don't know until we find out directly and then like the other part is like why do I want my partner to watch my videos and like to really answer that I think like I want to be fully understood la, and to be fully supported because that's what I would do if it were the other way around I want to get him I want to understand what matters to him, what he cares about, and I'll do whatever it takes to get him to his vision of his his dream life. Why? Why sounds like um like financial advice now? <laughs> it's like it's like it's not a part- partnership. It suddenly becomes like okay, I'm advising you how to sell your goal. Sounds like financial yeah. advisor will do right. And, and on this topic about like you know watching videos, I think sometimes um. I mean, like, if I don't know you, then I watch your video. I think that's common, right? Because we all watch YouTube videos. But let's say if you are on a one-to-one conversations, not not just like boyfriend, girlfriend, right? It's just like, yeah, even among friends. Mm. Uh, let's say we talk about this topic, right? Eric asked me about what was, what you think about this thing, this topic, right? They say, oh, nah, send you. This is my video. Go and watch it, Eric. <laughs> Go and watch it. Then we discuss. <laughs> Sometimes it sounds a bit like weird, right? It's like, we are we are talking now. Then you go and ask me to watch your video. So I, I mean, from the person who share it, um, I think it's not like very offensive. It's more like okay, I put on a lot of effort to create all this nice video. To to me, it's mm. like my my you know um, it's it's a good stuff that I want to share. But from the person who took it, it's more like, why are you doing this to me? Mm. <laughs> oh, I don't know whether you 
such feeling. Uh, have you done that before? Have you like sent a friend your video like, okay, like here are my thoughts. Like I, I'm lazy to explain right now, but here. Have you? I think in the in the beginning, yeah. yes, there. Mm, Unti, the you, have, you send huh? it to me. In the beginning, right? Yeah. yeah. There was this one time I was asking you about uh, some company. They said, nah, here's my two hour <laughs> TCSS. I look at the duration, two hour. Then I was like, <laughs> you, you really think I will watch? <laughs> yeah, I was like, where got time to watch two hour video? Like, yeah. yeah, five minutes I will consider. Uh, but two hours is a bit, <laughs> it's a bit long. Yeah. yeah. Attention, attention span. Right. Yeah. So I actually wanted to ask also, like, uh, just uh, pivoting a little bit, right? Uh, from the boyfriend girlfriend thing to like your teaching career, right? Previously, you used to be a teacher. Then mm -hmm. you think that one of the considerations that you have when you left teaching was one of it was uh the remuneration, the 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 salary wise because you didn't negotiate a a a good starting base salary and then you mm -hmm. kind of burn yourself out by taking on more classes so that you get a more variable pay i guess so my my question is right um when you left that school right why didn't you try to apply for another place where now you know how to negotiate better now you know what you're worth now you know what you can put on the table uh, what you can offer as a teacher mm. or even mm. like maybe setting up your own center kind of thing like that's basically what I did la. so I was quite curious like because you already have the 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 idea that hey you know what to do then mm. why 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 do you like switch <laughs> entirely to sales like I think I heard in one of your videos you went to sales that's like super different Basically, that's something that I did also, lah. But <laughs> that's a another story. But I just want to get uh, what was your thought process. Okay, great. I want to hear your sharing also. I'm interested. Um, my thought process was yes, the money was very very small compared to the impact that I was creating. Um, as a teacher, which I feel like teachers will always feel this way. It's so much work for so little pay, and what scared me was that thinking when I'm 40, when I'm 50, people view me as like even less valuable. I wouldn't, I felt like I wouldn't even be hitting like 10k. Maybe I'll hit 10k, but when I'm 40, no, I want the 10k now. And um, also another thing like after leaving and like being good at sales, being good at YouTube and earning a lot of money, which can earn a lot of money through YouTube newsflash guys right um it is the freedom that is different when I am working in sales and when I am running my own business as a teacher I had to play the game of the school calendar um, for the school that I was working for I couldn't take leave so if someone died, if I wanted to take a holiday, if there was like something that was very important to me, at that point in time, I couldn't take leave. And I had to play that game of like these fixed hours in a day. Sure, the work is meaningful, but do I want to play my life like that? Do I want to have my options taken away? No. So that's why I never re-entered into teaching. And that teaching per hour rate, versus a speaking engagement per hour rate is like insane. So I've been paid insane amounts to speak for an hour in the thousands. Yeah. So my teaching rate was like what? 150 ringgit for three hours a week or something like that. Like it's different. But, but as a teacher you can start your TikTok channel and start creating TikTok with the students. Kiwi? Yeah, I think that girl, she's really amazing. I I know her her boyfriend. I met him and then he gave me her number. I just have not reached out to her yet. She's so cool. And I mean, yes, but there's a reason why I didn't I didn't go back, right? And I feel like this is where I want to play. La. I want to play on this scale. And I'm not done yet. This YouTube channel is just the starting point. What I envision is really like, like maybe a school or a, like a learning center where we learn life skills, whether it's about money, 
entrepreneurship, friendship, self-esteem, mental health, all of these like important things that we need to equip ourselves to live like really great lives. And it's not just gonna be one, it's gonna be multiple and it's gonna be global. So I'll start here in Malaysia and then Indonesia, because I speak some Indonesian and then Spanish because hablo español. So it's really it's really like I feel I've been leading up to this my whole life. I just didn't know. I wasn't I wasn't courageous enough to dream so big, but it's there and it's like it's really inside. Um, that's that's really very very big, very big dreams. Can see why why your ex boyfriend will be like, okay, now I'm lost. <laughs> right. Sorry. And at the time, I didn't realize that. I just at the time I was still playing small games, right? So I'm nervous, like with this new new relationship or new new guy I'm dating, like, right? you know? So how how long have you been dating this uh? Like One, a, two, three, around four, four days, <laughs> four days, <laughs> four days, and you can tell. I don't know. I have a very strong feeling, and it's better um, start booking that wedding re- wedding hotel soon. No, yeah. no, no. I want to have fun. I want to take my time, but it's different because I feel like I already love him. I I know him, but I just don't know him in this way, in the romantic way. Um. Yeah. Wait, wait. When is this video coming out? Because I need to tell my ex boyfriend first before I tell the book. Right after this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Usually we very slow and. But what what do you need to tell him? Like what was. Um. So I need to tell him that I, I like this person lah, and that's it lah. It's not asking for permission, but I want him to hear from me first lah. I don't want him to hear from somebody else. Does, does he know you have already ended it? Huh? Like, the, what? he knows it's ended, right? Oh, you mean the guy I'm seeing now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's been there through... Okay, like, he's a long-time friend. That, yeah. But moving on, like, what, what's next for your channel specifically? Yeah. What are you planning uh, to do with it? Is it create more Stash Away videos? Uh, well, yeah, I will create Stash Away videos and I will create whatever comes up and the three pillars of, so it's about money, about uh friendship or connection relationship, and it's about self worth. These three things, um, yeah, that that's really the focus of the channel and about living life. For me, living a great life is being in connected relationships, having a lot of money to spend and have experiences with the people that I care about. And feeling so good on the inside that it emanates out and other people also can feel it. And they feel good about themselves. They are living their great lives and whatever that looks like to them. And doing it together. Because I feel like we're really here on this like earth for like some aligned reason, right? And what better way to live our life than just to be authentic. And like if we want it, go for it. You don't know how? Figure it out. Yeah, so that that's the channel. That's the game plan. I don't know the specifics on like, oh, I'm gonna produce like a stash away video. I'm gonna produce like a video about relationships, and it's gonna be like this. I I don't have those answers, but I wanna find out as I go. Are you are you um currently looking for any mentors who have done what you have said you're gonna do, and then maybe get some insights from them? Because that's mm-hmm. one of the fastest way I think if you want to achieve your goals, right, they can shortcut <clears throat> mm-hmm. a lot of pitfalls and, and all those struggling. If there's someone who has done what you planned to do, that, that's mm-hmm. I, I think. Uh, yeah. yeah. Big dreams, man. you have very big dreams and you want them fast. So I think that's one of the good ways you can accelerate your... Mm. Yeah. I that's great like thanks Eric I've not thought about that but I feel like even though I've not thought about like seeking out like a a mentor who's done it before I've um inadvertently done it also like I joined um a training um and I've been getting a lot of support there's a structure as to how to achieve these crazy big goals 
um, it's called Asia Works. It's um, yeah, it's yeah. got a lot of like, it's got a lot of like a polarizing like people love it or they're like really afraid of it. It's like a cult, like everything, right? But it works for me. And right now, the mentor that I'm getting is I'm studying about Melinda Gates. Uh, Melinda Gates is the one of the founders of the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, Microsoft. Their ex ex husband and wife. And why she is so powerful and why I want to learn from her is because she's a woman. And being a woman, I cannot run that I want to have a family and I want to change lives. Big dreams, right? So she's done it. And I get to learn from her, like, even if it's from a distance. Maybe one day I'll meet her. Who knows, right? Mm. Possible, right? But yeah, like a physical mentor in like Malaysia or Singapore or the US I have not sought it out but it's something for me to think about so are you planning to go full time into this YouTube thing mm. <laughs> seems like it's a trend right now I've, yeah, I've yeah. seen several YouTubers who start about 3 years ago start all starting to go full time already like who? Ziet? Uh, Ziet uh, in Singapore there's this Chris Honey Money guy Honey uh, money. Oh, okay. Yeah, so basically anyone who passed like 10,000 mark, I'm starting to see them going full-time, la, except for you. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so I passed the 10,000 mark, what, two years ago, right? Yeah, you are at um, 20 plus already, right? Or even 30, 40. Eh? No, no, my goal is 50 in three months. So support me, okay? Share my content. um, <laughs> And I'll share yours also, obviously. Uh, but... I don't know, like it's a struggle for me to consider going full time because I love being in the industry that I am in. I get a lot of value out of it. Sure, I'm not working very, very hard in it. I feel like I'm only working like 20% of my capacity and that's my choice at the moment. I love the stability of a predictable income um, and that gives me freedom to do whatever I want. Uh, which is like create all these YouTube videos, do all these crazy things that I want to do. And I know that the impact that I want, I need to do this full-time or I need to focus full-time. But I'm not ready yet. Maybe one day, who knows, right? But, but yeah, like if I were to rely solely on YouTube, at that time in 2021, I felt like, okay, I was earning ridiculous amounts of money a month for a one person channel i know right uh, i know right especially for like especially for malaysia a malaysian channel and yeah. you're earning like usd that's like times 4.5 like. oh okay no i wasn't earning usd right i was earning ringgit okay like sure adsense is usd but the money the bulk of the money was not coming from adsense it was coming from referrals and, you know, like referrals and affiliates, they are variable. But, okay, I'll share. And this is shocking. Um, so maybe the audience will be, like, shocked. But in my peak, there were, like, two, three months where I was earning 20, 30K a month. Such a rookie number. Sorry? <laughs> a rookie number? All right. Yeah, great. So yeah, yeah, I've, I've, I've Kelvin's seen number. Kind of money, like. Kelvin, Kelvin, share, share yours. What's yeah. your peak? What were you doing? What's your peak? Wow, my peak back then, uh, I think mm. easily three times that amount. Eh, mm. For certain, for, it's, while it was only at the peak for one, two months, mm. then after that, it was a constant decline. Uh, mm. Yeah. yeah because, so... because you see like all the brokers that came to Singapore, uh, then they went a bit, some of them went a bit into Malaysia, uh, like uh, the Mumu. Um, uh. Then Ma- Malaysia didn't have much new brokers back then. Now there's what M plus, there's the Rakuten trade. But for Singapore, the brokers that came in, they came all together at once. So there was uh easily five or more. And the referrals from there was was quite insane. <laughs> yeah, it's really crazy one. But it, 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 the thing is it won't last also. Once that mm. has been exhausted, the amount will drop to like maybe five percent of the original amount. So now 5%. I'm a bit panicking. <laughs> Yeah, like okay, so that's that's the thing about YouTube, the YouTube game, like it's so variable. It swings so much. Like you've, I feel like 
I would be selling like luxury and property as a real estate agent. That's like, that's how the big the swing is, right? Like some months you'll get huge and some months you get nothing. And I don't, I don't want that for me. I want what I do on YouTube to be a bonus. Yeah. So that's my, my, that's my take on it. Like all the YouTube money really is a bonus for me. I don't need it. I, I'm excited about it, but I don't want to need it. And I don't want to run my YouTube channel based on how much I can earn. It's more about how much I can give. So different, lah. very privileged, lah, right? So because of that, then I get to think like that. Lah. Actually, I'm just curious, like uh, you said your father is a business person, right? What does he do uh, if it's convenient to share? Mm. So this one is something that I don't really share online because like there are stalker issues. Like last time when I first started, mm -hmm. like they took this person or few people took my LinkedIn info and put it on Laoyat. And then I think they did like a, a background search or whatever. And then like they were hinting at, at my dad. Okay, so my dad's not a politician. He's like a regular Chinese guy, but he's very, very smart very hardworking, so he got into business um, and it fit him all. it fit him perfectly and yeah, he started from zero and then made his money and then provided the best education for us and it's not just the education but it's the love that he and my mom poured into us and that's why I am the way I am today. Um, yeah, so I don't, I don't normally talk about like what industry I'm in but like, if we're friends, uh, like, if you meet me in person, I would actually tell you. So, you have no interest in, like, uh, inheriting the business? The business. Okay. Um, inheriting the business. Well, he sold his businesses. Oh, sold already, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, um, and, like, even if he didn't, I don't think I am the person to inherit it. Sure, I can inherit it, but I'm not the person who has the passion to run mm. in this in this sphere. Yeah. Mm. I know that I am made for the education space and that's where I, I will thrive. So why put myself in an arena where I know it's not the right fit? Mm. I can I can do it. I can do it well. But will I love it? No. I think need to chase the passion uh, without without the passion or uh, is uh very hard to stay long in in the business uh. so but and you know it from the industry whether it's something that that like you want to do it or not right mm, uh, yeah actually I, I also want to pivot a little bit because uh I, I think like last year you still prov like churn out a lot of like videos related to finance related to investing your all this, uh, last year this, yes, that, that was there was maybe one or two years ago uh, and then you mm. saw it's not about like um end of last year, um didn't like there, there isn't too much of like you know like all these investment mm. journey updates. So you, you want to give us some <clears throat> you know highlight when when it comes to your investment journey or or uh, just uh, the progress so far. How how is it? Yeah, I think like I'm quite like me and my YouTube channel. Like you can see where I'm at in life. Like what's important to me. So at the start of my YouTube channel, why like investing was really like the key focus was because then I was really really focused on building the portfolios and like like getting my groove in like figuring out what kind of investor I am and like really really learning and then after that I tapered off like my interest in it tapered off like okay I built my portfolios to a certain size yeah sure they're not performing exactly like how I know they can but yeah like I'm happy I'm happy enough and then that's when my focus started to shift. La. Like in life, there's so many areas to focus on that it's really like one, one at a time or like two at a time. So where I started to see some gaps in my life were my relationship um, pillars. La. So I felt it la, in how I was like interacting with my family. I was way too busy. It was not how I wanted to live my life. Like my dad would look at me and he'd be like, yeah, don't disturb Suin. She she's got things to do. She's like her time is very important, and I didn't want that. Like, I didn't want my family to feel like my time is more important than them because that's not true. And then my relationship with my ex boyfriend was failing also. So that's where like my gear started to shift la, from finance and 
like the money yeah the money is still working in the background not working as hard as I can I can make it work but yeah I was okay with that and um then yeah you know, then the exploration into like self-worth because this one was like it was huge lah, for me like for the longest time I thought I was working on my self-worth ma. like oh yeah yeah you can earn a lot of money then like okay I'm like growth mindset I'm making a lot of friends like building all these things in my life like looks good feels good but inside how come I still feel not good enough how come I still feel unworthy that no matter what all these like huge achievements they're great but why do I keep saying hey notice me see me and like what I'm doing right? that part was still not not like elevated so that's why my focus moved here long. and I think that's where I'm at now and like you will keep like moving back and forth and so it's whatever that is needing my attention in my life and like can feel and like when like before it hits my mind it will I feel it in my body something's not right really yeah so it's about like really like connecting the brain and the heart and the body and yeah it's just that yeah. so yeah my investments are still going I've not been focusing on them I yeah it's a, it's messy lah to me so I haven't even opened certain portfolios I look at some and I'm like okay great and then I look at some other ones like I haven't even logged in and you know. yeah. Okay, looks, la. looks like looks like we know uh the direction of the of the channel already. It is although you say it's money, uh relationship and self worth, I, I think the money part maybe will, will be just like smaller percentage. Uh, huh? Ooh, it's a new so? really new focus now. I don't think so. I feel like it has to be there. Like sure, maybe smaller, but it's it's just because I am here right now, but money is such a big thing that cannot run away from. And a lot of people are still figuring out, including myself, right? Because I'm at this stage where I'm single, I have no kids. But what happens when kids come in the picture? And then I feel like, oh, I won't swear. But I, I feel like then that's a different ball game already. That's a different ball game. Like the, the rules of the game changes and Calvin has like talked about this before like, in our conversation. No, I'm quite curious. What's stopping you from going full time into YouTube? Because I, I think for you, the money is already there. Right? What's, what's, why are you not switching over yet? She wants this to be extra, right? Yeah, not the is it? Poor. You want it to be bonus, Calvin. Can, you cannot understand the word bonus, right? When it becomes pay. No, because from what she has been describing, is like YouTube is her... Real, real passion, right? If correct me if I'm wrong, but Education. You, are, you are more worried about the, the income side. Um. Okay. Yeah, I get you. I'm a bit confusing here. I, I like receiving a steady income stream from working my full time job, and at the same time, if I just did YouTube alone. I feel like that's a lot of a that's a heavy weight for me to carry, and I don't know if I want to do that. Even though I know that yes, in order to achieve my big dreams, this is one this is one of the ways that will really work. This is the scale right of YouTube. It it's global, um. But I'm human, lah. Right, I'm human. I get scared, I back away, I move forward towards it, and then I go back again. So this is this is my back and forth on flight. Not committing to doing YouTube full time. And at this point, yeah, I'm not I'm not committed to doing YouTube full time. So much excuse. What happened so to new, new me new year new me kind of thing? New year new me la, but with my rules also la. It cannot be like, oh yeah, I'm just gonna quit my job. Which I find a lot of value in, like yeah. I. Uh, yeah. if you need advice on that, actually, I recently found quite a few things that uh, more or less uh, cements my belief that YouTube can be a constant income thing, la. I can mm. share with you later, la. So be because all of us like we rely on YouTube for income, but I realized that YouTube is just a funnel to something else that's that can be a lot bigger, la. Like you see all the other YouTube creators for the finance side, la. 
some are using it to sell course. So the YouTube is just a front, the course, the books, uh, the one-on-one sessions, uh, or even for your whatever sessions, that, um, or even those kind of live sessions. So uh, YouTube is just a thing. The income from that is very insignificant. Uh, the referrals is also is a is, is it, it will go down like you will never beat people like Mr. Money TV, that kind of scale. La. So I think but you have something big to offer, which is like your probably breakup breakup experience, uh the surfing experience. <laughs> Wendy is laughing. So uh yeah. and, and plus you are Malaysia's biggest finest female finest YouTuber right now. I think that speaks a lot of words. So mm. I would say don't let it go to base lah. Yeah, but I also feel like you can't walk and sell, Kelvin. No, it's not. <laughs> no, no. What what you just said just now? You said, um, yeah, you have a lot to share on your breakup experience and surfing experience, but you will never get to that level of Mister Money TV. And I I disagree lah. It's like it's not no. a. So it's... okay, yeah, don't get me wrong. So I mean, for the referral side. Um, you will never be able to compete with him because he, he has a team running the entire thing for him. Like even he has he has a website and a newsletter right now. Like like whoa, I I can't even fight with that lah. But instead of going straight on him, straight straight uh fight right, you you have things that he can't offer. Mm. Uh, like your experience in life or whatever growth that thing that you are going through lah. Mm. I think I think with that you are you are able to connect to other, probably the female audience that he's not able to reach or a younger audience, something mm-hmm. like that. Lah. Yeah. But also, I feel like I want to call you out on this. Like your view is that taking people head on, competing, it's really not about that. Lah, because his dream and my dream is like very, very, like very different. Like I have not met him in a while. I'm meeting him this Saturday. So I want to hear what's his dream now. But it's really about creating what I want in life and this is my truth well, like right now I, I I mean I can I can build a team I can build a YouTube team and it can be like this like huge monster of like courses or whatever was that what matters to me no it's not because if I build courses right is the purpose like off the top of my head is big money right but is it big impact maybe if the courses are really like how I want it to be sure but you know, like I don't need to stick to someone's formula. I want to figure out what is it I really want. Because if I I just stick to their formula, then I'll get their results, lah, right? I think the direction that Kelvin was taking is that uh we need to focus on our our USP, yeah. Our, mm. our, what's your dream, lah? Basically, he's also saying the same thing as you, just that he's he's coming at it from a different angle. Like, okay, mm. this person is doing this thing, but you. You're special in this way. Like I, I know of uh I have a BFF, right? He, she's a female. She's like uh, about four, late 40s. But she was always telling me, right? Like uh there's no female like uh finance YouTuber that's able to explain things very well that she can relate to. Like mm. all we have is all those like uh Angmos, like <laughs> then she cannot relate to them. Then she was like, How nice would it be if like there's someone in our local context, like Singapore, Malaysia, this kind, then you're able to share, you know, what you learn about finance because not a lot of ladies are into finance. Yeah, t- tell them about uh, annual report. They're like, oh, next, next channel. Ah, cooking, let's look at it. Shopping, let's look at it. Like, so so if you can leverage on this, I think what Kelvin was trying to put across, lah, I'm not very sure is that's what he's trying to say. <laughs> I, maybe uh, I, that's what I'm saying. Right? <laughs> I thought that yes, uh, you do have a lot of very unique uh unique uh take on certain things. And you because you're very local ma, to yeah. us, la, you're very local. So uh that could be your leverage, uh, so to speak, like for the Asian community. Mm. But maybe mm-hmm. I don't know, is that big enough for you? Like global. String down to for the Asian community, not big enough for me. Yeah, not big. But but I hear you. Um, it starts here, lah. Right, it really just starts here, and it's not always gonna be like content on like relationships on self worth. It's really all three, and that's my commitment, lah. It's just that I've been doing 
the money topics for so long and I know people miss it. I hear it. Like they're saying, okay, yeah, I miss it. But this is my process. Uh. All right. I think we need to wrap up already. Um, thank you so much, Swin, for your time. Come and chit chat with three uncles here. <laughs> uncle, not very young to your uncles, right? <laughs> it's only Eric is the uncle. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think I'm the only qualified uncle here. Is it? What what makes someone an uncle? Like the age. Really? Not just the age, it's the it's the children's kids. So, you know, when the when when the friends of my children see me, of course they don't call me name or should call uncle one. So mm. that, that's when the upgrade came in. Yeah. Okay, uh, okay. uh, uh what, wait question. Bunti, do you have kids? Yeah, yeah. How old? Uh they are ten ten and nine. Ten and nine. <laughs> why why are you give me that look? <laughs> you look like you're you. ten. Yeah, yeah, you look like you're like 20, 20. Yeah, yeah. I'm 20. and then <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to guess my age, right? <laughs> Actually, Eric, you feel very young to me. Like I would say thirty-seven. You got youthful vibe, so I'm guessing you're older. Uh, Eric is so happy now. That's the uh... magic of Tonka Ali. <laughs> hey, don't anyhow say it. I drink water only. Then your kids, how old, Eric? My kids is only seven. Okay. Yeah. And Calvin's kid is quite young, right? Yes, so. <clears throat> Two. Yeah. You baby. So. Yeah, like even being in this like this chat, I'm the only female. I'm still, not married, no kids, and. It's interesting uh, whether you will choose to share what it's like. I haven't caught your videos. Like, I haven't caught this podcast videos. I've caught your individual videos. Um, but do you share about like what it's like to be a dad, a breadwinner, like the real emotions behind it, like your worries, your struggles, and the celebrations? Do you, do you share that? Who? Who shared? Like, do any of you share that on your like? I think the the problem is not that we don't want to share. It. the The problem is no one has been asking that lah. So someone need <laughs> to la, ask la, the la. question. <laughs> got like, got who who asked before? I, I I'm sure that Kelvin have received quite quite a number of all these questions, and then he shared his uh, journey. Yeah, I think maybe Eric and, and myself like maybe some are uh, not not many these type of questions. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. Yes, that's true. Really? <laughs> for for me, I, is, I I can't monetize. <laughs> <laughs> ah okay that's interesting because for me right I'm so curious like because I'm interested in that that's the next stage right like what is it like to be a parent a male and a parent having this like I'm I'm going to be the best that possible I'm making a I'm making a living I'm showing you what it's like to be a man how to treat women all of this like it's so interesting to me and I feel like this conversation is like it's like a zero or not like zero or nothing like it's like only finance but it's not just finance all right it's like why are you making so much money for or what is it what is it really for what's your why yeah, the, the finance part is just the you know the opening part uh, because mm. once you get into it you try to understand the philosophy behind that right then you will touch on other areas as well because mm. you know I, our journey is not just finance right? it's not like I, I I was born to buy ETF then <laughs> accumulate 1 million right that, that's not the goal right it's, it's a no. lot more, more comprehensive than that uh, yeah. but sometimes we need conversation like this to, to spark things to, to, for us to share uh, our experience that does make conversations interesting right? yeah mm. Yeah. Yep. I think um time to close. Um we hope we definitely hope that we Wait, will be able okay. to invite Swin back. Yes, Eric. Oh yeah, we need to remind our audience, please click the like buttons. You know, <laughs> we, we don't have chicken with us. Any any uh any words from you, Swin? Uh last closing. Um yeah, I would like to invite you three and what is his name? Chi Chi Kyung. Chi Kyung. Chi Kyung to like share this site also on your channel or like in your individual lives with people because surely they're curious right and also the people who are watching this like i hope you got a lot of value out of it and like what you can do is like share subscribe comment but also like take the time in your own lives to 
to connect with your why. Like, why are you here on this earth? And who do you want to do life with? And sh share with them, like tell them about it, like whether it's like an I love you or like share your dream. Yeah, do that. <laughs>